let's let's switch gears a little bit. I, I read more of your book. If you haven't picked it up, Sex, Drums, and Rock and Roll, The Hardest Hitting Man in Show Business. Uh, your forward, by the way, is no slouch in the music community. Neil yeah. Peart did your forward, Kenny. Talk a little bit about Neil Peart and uh, your relationship with him and what he's meant to you as a drummer. Well, Neil, I, I met him when I was doing the uh, recording with the Buddy Rich Big Band for a tribute to Buddy in the early 90s. Uh, and uh, I was the last guy last day because I was so busy recording all over the place. I was in Nashville. That was the week I was doing uh, Philadelphia with with the Cinderella. I was in Nashville with Hank Jr. I think I was in Memphis and I was in Canada. And I barely, I didn't, I was scared I wasn't going to make it to the session. I was the last guy last day. Walk in, Neil is very, very nice, very kind. And um, and then we didn't get to hang too much. But what happened was I was recording later that year in Montreal, in a very fam- outside of Montreal, very famous studio, which sadly is now gone, called Morin Heights, where Rush would do records up there. I did a lot of records with different artists up there, mostly Canadian. And... Uh, you know, Bon Jovi produced Aldo Nova, which was a big uh, uh, Canadian artist. So we did it there. I did uh, Corey Hart, who grew up in Montreal, up there. Um, anyway, I'm up there doing something with Corey Hart. He's producing an artist, a female artist. And all of a sudden, Neil Pert pops his head in. And he says, oh, Kenny, can I talk to you? And he says, listen, I'm, 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 I was, I'm mixing the Buddy Rich tracks. But uh, there's this one song called Pick Up the Pieces by Average White Band. And, and um, uh, what's his name? Didn't want to take a, uh, a drum solo uh, on it. And um, I'm spacing out for some reason. Um, Steve Ferroni didn't want to take a drum solo. He's just like the groove. I feel like it needs something. So you want to overdub percussion. Well, I've had a lot of experience playing percussion because in Mellencamp Band, I had to do a lot of percussion. A lot of weird building tracks up from the big bottom up sometimes doing percussion first, then drums. So Neil and I started with the low tones and then moved up to the middle tones and the medium tones and the medium high tones and the high tones. And we spent a long time jamming together, playing. We called ourselves the Bald, bald Bongo Brothers or something. I don't, I don't know. Whatever. It was something crazy. And afterwards, I got into one of his sports cars, drove to his house, and uh, we drank some scotch, and uh, listened to the uh, mixes of the Buddy Rich Big Band, hung out, and he showed me where he, it was an island. Uh, I could, we were up on a hill in the woods. It was beautiful. It was an island down there. And he said he'd go over there um, by himself or with his daughter or something. His, mom, his wife was in the house. They would do like Morse code or signals back to each other. You know, so we became real close uh, Ever since then, and when sometimes I'd be in his bus driver, or the Rush's bus driver became uh, Melissa Etheridge's bus driver, and we were on tour uh, one time in Toronto, and I had dinner with uh, all the guys in Rush. That's amazing. <laughs> you know, it was really cool. And, you know, of course, Neil is like extraordinary, extraordinary drummer and incredible writer, too. 